I'm here for it, bro. I'm here for the, the yeah. multicultural. Yeah. Really? Yeah, black man. girlfriend effect. Yeah. yeah came You're in, into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She came What's the black girlfriend effect? They just come in and start fighting? No, bro. <laughs> you you <laughs> she don't know about the black girlfriend effect. effect. She, yeah, she just... Wait, she what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This is oh, you, you don't know about You just about glow this. up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's too Yeah, yeah. 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 bro. I like that. I like that. They shave their hair because they start losing it. Because it's so stressed being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard they because the there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah, yeah. that means white. Yo, who gets it? That means white. Hey, let me do no. the US translation. Kendrick fans, <laughs> get him! <laughs> we love them yeah, all. That's, yeah, that's bro. royal English for white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, uh, we. All right, so people were offended. I totally understand that. So, just really fast, what are our impressions? Okay, so basic racist stereotypes. Black women will hit you. Wow. Black women will be angry at you. Wow. Super. Wow. Anyways, Andrew is like this. You know, it's so funny, though, because Andrew Scholl's way back in the day. And even one of the reasons why I seemed to like him was that he seemed to understand minority communities pretty well. And he would get away with saying things, even the N-word. Future Brittany here, I do recall hearing Andrew Schultz say the N-word with the soft day, but apparently I think I'm wrong. I can't find the clip. The only clip I found was Andrew saying he doesn't say it. So I'm going to go ahead and take back what I said and make a correction because I just want to make sure I'm not sending out misinformation. I just have a distinct memory of him doing it. I even have a memory of me sending a clip to my brother saying I can't believe Andrew's like taking the risk just because like we were both such big Andrew fans. So maybe my memory's wrong. You know how Dr. Kirkonda always says memory is fickle. So apparently mine is. Yeah. Ones that we would n all not even probably say on this podcast, except you, because you work with a lot of black people, you might be willing to drop. Oh, them. I don't do the N word. Huh? <laughs> I don't do the N word. Oh, I don't do it, dude, unless you do. <laughs> <laughs> because of the way that communities loved him. But then I started to feel like super, like maybe actually misogynistic and ableist. And you guys know when um, Gillis, what's his name? Uh, the guy who does the Trump impressions. He was on their podcast and he called them out. <laughs> Some, my guy, my guy's nice. By the way, yeah, yeah. that's wow. <laughs> These guys are really, awesome. Yeah, they're having fun. Yeah, for you guys yeah. to sit here and be like, <laughs> wait a minute, let's bring it up and mock them. That's <laughs> Up, dude. That's oh, a, that's a dude. Yeah. <laughs> by, yeah, yeah. by using them as an insult uh, for making like ableist jokes, and so it's one of those things where I think if you're more progressive, Shulls isn't funny, but if you're more centrist, it, he kind of is. Yeah, Shane Gillis, thank you. Shane Gillis called them out for being ableist, which is you know interesting because that doesn't happen a lot of the time. So in that moment, you could see it if you had seen Shane's face, you could see they made the ableist joke, and then. You could see Shane think about it and then call them out. So that's why it kind of went viral. Shane called them out and said, like, you're not being funny. This isn't a funny joke. So, which is what the fans of, like, Shits and Gigs were hoping that they would do. Let's see. Hold on. What are their names? James and Fuhad. So they were hoping that James and Fuhad would do the same. So this is them. And look, they've got, like, anime. Okay. I see Naruto. I see uh, Hunter Hunter. I see Avatar The Last Airbender. So these guys are, like, modern kind of... I think liberals from the UK who I just painted as like red pill misogynist, but chat's saying like they're not red pill, but fine. They're not red pill, but are they like, are they really like that progressive though? I mean, you know what I mean? Like whatever. And apparently they've cheated in relationships and apparently there are a lot of their humors around cheating. And apparently they have like, I don't know. I just, every time I hear them on TikTok, I just think like, mm, I know this bubble. I'm not into it very well. But then they have like anime and black women watch them, which I'm shook by. I did not know women watch them. I did not know that. I don't know why I'm so shocked by that, but I did not realize women were watching them. You know, you'll see, uh, they're not progressive, but they're not red pill. That's so girl. That's so specific. Well, then what are they? Like, are they centrist? Are they trying to be normie? Like they have 8 million followers on TikTok. They have like a million followers on YouTube. Their podcast is number four or in the top four in the UK. Like, what are they? 
like because when I look at them, they have they're black who watch anime, which means they're not technically like completely mainstream. But also, if they're not red pill and they're not, they're like what li- you guys are saying, liberal leaning. Mm, I guess like in the centrist way, though, right? Like not the prog- like they're not conservatives, but they're not. You know what I mean? Ko says they're trying to be normy. I guess that makes sense. They're just ignorant men. I mean, maybe. Sure. But watching anime is like, no, okay, everyone's saying anime is mainstream. It's still not mainstream because mainstream people can't name the characters. Like mainstream is very different. Like mainstream, okay, it depends on which generation you're talking about mainstream, but it's not as mainstream as I would consider truly mainstream things. But remember, I'm in an anime bubble. So like we might be used to anime and everyone we know talks about it. But a lot of women still don't date guys who date who like listen to anime or watch anime. A lot of my friends don't watch anime because it's not mainstream. So mm, what does mainstream mean? How uh, you guys like, again, what are you comparing it to? Because you got to think about it. Like even Meg Thee Stallion introducing anime into her thing. Not everybody gets it. People don't get it. She's like cute and quirky because she's introducing anime to her fans but they don't get it like people are still like what is this anime thing so i don't know you say it's mainstream i don't know about that okay let's keep going guys so this is the boys apologizing for what they said on their podcast recently please note that it wasn't titled apology it was titled things you can't live without episode 425 so it wasn't a so like it wasn't a singular video it didn't stand out on their channel and they didn't as far as i see post the apology on their tiktok they could have updated that maybe so here we go this is the intro to their episode they didn't even get it a, give it a formalized video goes right before we get into today's episode mm-hmm. uh quick psa quick acknowledgement mm-hmm. um so if you know you know if you don't that's fine um but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, incredibly. Speci- <laughs> bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Make- mm, not going to get into specifics. If you know, you know. Interesting, interesting. Mm, not a big fan of the way this has already started. Yeah, uh, like, frankly, like, racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm-hmm. And to give, there's, there's, first of all, before we get into, like, specifics or anything like that, obviously, there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um, and... Now, I didn't know this about them, but apparently they are trying to be not controversial. They actually are trying to be sort of normy, not normy, like in a sense. So they are apologizing, I think, to maintain that audience more or less. I don't think they're as centrist as Andrew Schultz, but I Schultz, but I Schultz, but I don't think they're as progressive, obviously, as like a progressive. So they're not progressive, but they're also apologizing. But it also feels like a lot of people didn't like this apology. I watched a lot of like black women creators, black female creators, like make content about it and none of them were happy. I saw maybe one woman that was like, Andrew Schultz is just making edgy jokes. Okay, girl, like we get it. But everyone's pretty mad about this. Fight or flight is a real thing. Like it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing. And it's so not easy to say, but when you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down. I'll smack homeboy in the face. I will say this, I'll do that. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock and all you want to do is move on. Yeah. All you- Are they also formally po- uh, podcasters or comedians? I'm not sure. Because going on Andrew was a risk as the podcast is very risky and edgy. So I'm not sure if they did that just for the publicity. But it's also, that's why I'm saying like, I thought they were a boy podcast. Uh, every Every time they come on my, every single time they come on my TikTok. They're so obviously misogynistic to my brain. I don't understand why women are... Well, of course, I guess women watch misogynists. But, like, even I watch misogynists. Like, I'm not saying I don't. Though I, you know, I'm more frequently annoyed by all of it. But this feels kind of... I don't know. I don't know 
what's happening here. This isn't, like I said, I don't watch them. So this isn't my bubble. But it's like, I don't, you know. Okay, chat saying they're primarily podcasters. Okay, okay. Bro, Literally, move on is the fucking do, word, bro. All like, you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Just move on to the next thing. There's and so like many we had times. to say a few times, bro, just move on. Just move just on. Move on. So, so they're saying they were in fight and flight. They're saying they didn't know. They were saying in the moment in their head, they're just thinking like, fuck, move on from this joke. I don't want to answer this joke. Which to be fair, when they answered the question, like, do who do you prefer, black women or, or white white women? No, it's a comedy podcast. So everything is made to be like, oh, I caught you. I caught you. But in a serious setting, would that have been their answer? I don't know. Their answer was hesitant. Does that indicate something? I don't know. Different topics, you were like, move on, move on, move on. And yeah. It's not even like about pity laughs or anything, but we just wanted to get, get out of that situation. Out of the, literally get out of that situation, keep the ball rolling. And we thought it was going to be more of like a a bros chat. Yeah, but yeah, it, just so it ended yeah, up yeah. being something that's ended not up meant being to be. something that's. But that's the problem. From Andrew's perspective, it was a bro chat. From my perspective, it was a bro chat. I mean, if Trump will say locker talk is grabbing by the pussy, then might as well make some, you know, fun of black women, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like that, to say it's like a boys chat, like that's why boys chats feel so misogynistic because it's always at the expense of women. And in this case, black women. And again, I understand like these are just humans being humans and they're having a conflict. But this is what's so interesting is like, how did it go this way? Why did they even go on this podcast to begin with? But also they have to make a decision now. They're having a similar situation to white guy with the jaw, white guy with the jaw, Matt. No, Matt? Matthew? Is that his name? White guy with the jaw. They're having that moment. Are you going to abandon your female audience for male approval and validation? Or are you going to maintain it? They've chosen Matt Reif. Thank you. Matt Reif doubled down, called everyone special needs. They are apologizing to their audience. It sounds like they want to keep their audience, which is probably good rather than bad, right? Us, like really really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected and protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys facts um, and it is definitely not cool to be in that situation and again not be the ones to stand up and kick the cameras down and we fucked it on that occasion we did it's not going to happen again and it's about being human. It's about mm. realizing that you don't know what. Mm, let's see. Chat says if they were truly uncomfortable, they could have just left. I, I don't know. I will say when they said they were in a position where they didn't know what to do. I mean, I'll be real with you. I could point to so many collabs I've done with people. And in my head, I'm like, why didn't I just leave? And to be honest with you, it's a trained skill to be able to get up and leave. It really is. There are so many collabs I've done where I'm like, why didn't I just get up and fucking leave? And to be honest with you, it's it's a very strange sensation. And I will say, I do think this is a real phenomenon where it is much harder to get up and leave than you think it is. Because you think like, yeah, I'm going to be awesome. I'm going to be amazing in the moment. And you're not. Because that's something you train, like everything else. And that includes like a situation where somebody you're hoping to have a good networking relationship with says something, you're like, fuck. And then, of course, when you burn bridges with everyone, you have a reputation of being that person. So again, I think I want to give empathy and compassion to them. And I also, we're going to jump into Andrew, Andrew's bubble to see his reaction to it as well. Because depending on your morals and where you stand, it, it will be different. I think what's going to be the most interesting is for the viewers who are upset to re to re-examine why they watch these people in the first place and why they put them on a pedestal. I think that's really that's really what I think the lesson is going to be here. Because again, I'm not fans of, I don't watch either podcast and I used to watch flagrant a lot, but I'm just, I'm over it. So I don't watch either of these podcasts. So I, you know, I can only imagine that this is an opportunity for the viewers to recontextualize why they watch them. What you prepared for, you don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know, that you about, don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And once it's happened one time, you're like, fuck. All right. You learn from your mistakes. Um, and that's literally that's you literally, literally learn from your mistakes. Yeah, we man. fucked it and we're like we're sorry. We, and we definitely we definitely do apologize. It's for me, like it's one of them ones where you you don't realize that like for one, when you're part of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm, especially when, so when, bad. When you're Which is an insane realization to now have. Which is interesting. Are they just realizing as black men they can hurt black communities? What an amazing moment. Misog That's why I said they were they were misogynists. They're so patriarchally minded because he's now having the realization of like, 
oh shit, can black men hurt black communities? No shit, bro. What are you talking about? That's what the patriarchy is. That's what misogyny is. I love this. I love a bubble pop. I want it to be real and I hope that they learn from it only because it coincides with my values. See, if it didn't coincide with my values, maybe I would take an Andrew Schultz kind of situation where it's like double down on the joke. Or maybe I would say, I'm going to laugh no matter what. Or maybe I'm going to say this is an opportunity to stand up for something. But this is about values. So it's like, okay, they're having like this realization. I hope it sticks only because subjectively I think it's it's better for minority communities, for all communities to realize how we impact if you're in the community, your community. See, they're playing a community game. So if you're going to be black men representing healthy black men in a community where black women like you, you're you're now taxed with that burden of being good examples. And so you have to make that decision. See, Andrew in the comedian bubble, they don't want to do that. They want to be edgy and they want to say racist jokes and they want to be the guys who like don't follow any rules. Whoa. And I'm like, okay. So they're playing that game. So you have to choose what game you're playing. Well, not, yeah, when, yeah. When, unintentionally. Unintentionally for real. And yeah. also on, on top of that, it was so crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community, mm. the irony of the fact that whilst the whole reason we're in that country was to just show how much we love our community yeah. and show how much we love our supporters and yeah. how much time we spent at the shows and just like getting to know people mm -hmm. and just like understanding our community better and just like making friends and making bonds and showing yeah. love and they're showing love. And this whole six week trip was just about showing how much we love our community yeah. and how they much our community show up, yeah. show out for us. And then <sighs> to have that exact same trip be the reason that we're having to, to have this conversation now. Um, but at the end of the day, um, mistakes make you a better person. Mistakes do make you're you not a better person. A per you're not born yeah. a perfect person. Um, and yeah, we don't con- This is gonna get really awkward when we watch Andrew's part, but I would say that I don't believe they understand why it was hurtful, but also maybe they don't believe it was hurtful or should have been hurtful. And subjectively, any answer could be correct. So I personally would think this apology felt weak and I'd be like, eh, I'm probably not gonna watch you guys. I'll be real. And I already don't watch them, but I think if I was a fan, this would be like, eh, I don't know. I'm not into this, you know? Uh-uh, chat says, no offense to black women, but pandering to one community isn't worth it. You'll grow as big as a community will allow. I don't know if you're saying that black women don't have the power to cancel somebody because I don't know if you realize like this is exactly what's happening. <laughs> Like, I don't know if you're saying that, but it's one of those things where either they have this value or they don't. Because again, what Andrew's joke says is that black women are abusive and men are threatened. Like the black girl phenomenon or the black girlfriend phenomenon is supposed to uplift black women as uplifting their partners when you get to date them, right? The positive spin on the black girlfriend phenomenon is when you get a black girlfriend, you step up your game, which is like a like a nice like, little, like, yeah, like when you get a strong girlfriend, she makes you a better man. When you get a more pious girlfriend, she makes you better with God. When you get, you know, it's nice to be in a group that says when you date me, you become better. But Andrew is saying when you date black women, you get abused. That was the joke. <laughs> And that might be true for toxic groups of people who happen to be black, right? But the joke is, and it plays on a stereotype of, well, toxic and dysfunctional people who happen to be black. And that's the irony of it all, really, is that anytime we generalize with these jokes, in the context and in the room you're in, it might be safe if everyone knows it's just a joke, but the joke is always rooted in somewhat of a truth. So you you pin it to a bubble. So I know what kind of girls he was talking about. I think we all do, right? Like I have an image in my head when Andrew talks. I know which kind of girl he's talking about. But I also know that he's like generalizing in a way that feels wrong. Only if you're looking at it with critical. Like if you're thinking about it critically. Now I know D'Angelo Wallace said like, oh, Andrew Schultz isn't funny. He's not a comedian. I don't know how to say this. But I think most comedians are unfunny. Like I think most of them are very unfunny. And I am surprised all the time when people make like like comedians famous. I think some old school comedians were pretty funny, but generally I'm not a big fan of stand-up comics. I think they're low bar humor. 
And that's all it takes to be funny. And so I don't know. I, I just disagree with this premise of like, I don't like Andrew, so he's not funny. It's like, I, I don't like any of them, but th I can't possibly be the arbiter of what's funny, right? Like, I can't possibly be the arbiter. And look, Andrew and Flagrant used to make me laugh so hard, but they're just so stupid and their humor has gotten so dumb and it has gotten more misogynistic and more racist. And I just don't enjoy it in the same way because it doesn't feel thoughtful or considerate in the way that it kind of felt like it used to. And I don't even know if that's my memory is bad, but I swear it was better at some point, but maybe not. Maybe I've just grown. And that's probably a part of it as well. <sighs> don't, we don't appease that behavior we don't rate it um and we don't want you guys to think that we were sat in that room rating what's going on we hold our hands up we apologize um you learn from your mistakes and we hope we don't let our communities hmm. down again because ultimately we we do this for you guys like yeah you guys are all you we guys, have man you guys are literally all we have you guys have taken us to this to this level and we don't want to let you guys down going forward and anymore so you know <sighs> yeah but anyway yeah. On to regular viewership. Yes, sir. Uh, love of love. Gang, gang, gang. Uh, she was looking at the floor. She said, she said, do you want me to ring my dad? Uh, do you and that's it. What an interesting transition, right? Like, uh, it feels like a mistake was made. Look how much anime shit they have in the background. Do y'all not watch anime? Like, how do people consume anime? Are you really consuming it to dissect character development? Are you not learning from the lessons of these animes you're watching? Because, bro... It is what it is. Now, okay, to counter the experience, here's Andrew and his team's response to the situation. Any <laughs> listeners here that, that are upset at us, we just want to let you know that you're going to stay upset. Okay. What we're not going to do is sit here with our dicks tucked between our legs, <laughs> apologizing on the podcast for jokes. Okay. Matter of fact, we have a new apology video that we should definitely watch. Uh, the, the shits and gigs gentlemen came on the podcast. I love them. I, I love I them. I feel bad they're going through this. Yeah, but I, and, and actually, I do want to take it seriously because they are they are serious guys, and um, I want it. I'll stop fucking laughing, dude. <laughs> they're defending their community. I want it. They came on the podcast. They got a lot of flack uh, for laughing at a, at a joke, and I would just want to hear their apology. These are serious fucking guys, and this is a serious. This is a serious apology. Ow. <laughs> You're an asshole. Ow. Ow. No, can you take it seriously? All right, all right, seriously. Okay. I want all, I don't, Shifty. And just for the record, I have watched Brilliant Idiots. I've watched Charlemagne, and who's, by the way, got a horrible backstory about him and his wife. Girl, don't even get me started. And Andrew. And I feel the same way about all of them. I kind of feel like they're guys on a journey. I mean, Charlemagne specifically has like a pretty crazy past with his wife, but I think what's more or less insane is sort of looking to them like thinkers. Like I don't look at Charlemagne and think, of, oh, I, I wonder what Charlemagne thinks. I just, you know, I'm I put Andrew and him on in the background. Again, I've I've unsubscribed. I've unsubscribed. But when I would listen to them, it was like my dumb people stuff in the background. Like these boy podcasts are like when I need to listen to dumb people stuff. To like, you know, so that way if I walk away from my phone, I don't feel like I missed something important. No offense. You know, and that's how I feel like this content should be consumed. Like low brow, stupidest people on the planet making dick and ball jokes. And the dilemma is that they, I think, give themselves too much credit. And that then challenges other people to say like, okay, if you're going to give yourself so much credit, bitch, you better back it up with some evidence and data. Because that's part of the dilemma is like, are you a dick and balls joke comedian? Or are you sitting here like, we should talk about racism. And it's like, okay, what do you know about racism? Except how to be racist. Which I guess means you know a lot about it in some ways. Mm. I haven't seen yeah, this. Yeah, that's I, crazy, Shifty. That's crazy. Shifty. Come on, Shifty. Shifty. Shifty's fucking racist. I want everybody to just take this serious. And I want us to try to have a serious moment. Mm -hmm. It's a serious podcast. And I want to just listen to their heartfelt apology. Guys, yeah. goes. Right, before we get into today's episode, mm -hmm. uh, quick PSA. Quick acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. um, They're not going to watch the whole apology, which is why we watched the whole thing. I pre-watched just to make sure. So so if you know, you know, if you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did. Hold on. Chat says a lot of women say they love them because they feel the pot is a safe space for them. But it's the same reason why they didn't stand up for black women. They're pretty harm harmless non-confrontational guys mm. 
mm, do women find them attractive? Is that the thing? I mean, they're not not attractive. I mean, I would argue that they're attractive, but it's not enough. Like, I guess I'm confused how they were a safe space, I suppose. But you know what? Black women also suffer from misogyny. We all do. Like, I have internalized misogyny. Guaranteed they have internalized misogyny. Like, there's going to be a lot of, like, pick me or a lot of, like, negative cycled behavior in that could convince you to, like, these are the good ones. These are the guys who are cool. And, like, they're more modern and they're, they're not, like, you know, fresh and fit. Because remember that fresh and fit went on flagrant. Remember that Andrew Schultz and Akash were those modern guys that were telling fresh and fit, like, you can't talk about women this way. Do you guys remember how fresh and fit got just demolished by Akash and Andrew? And we were all like, fuck yeah, that feels so good to see guys stand up for women. And now we're here watching Andrew make fun of black women. So, you know. We did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, incredibly. Spe <laughs> Bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, don't, um, don't. Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Don't, making a, don't uh, you like, get in. Frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And <sighs> we were laughing. To be fair, if I was in Andrew's bubble, I would do the same thing. Because imagine from his perspective, he's been making jokes like this. They all do. It's a diverse cast on the couch, you know. Well, kind of. And, you know, there's like this idea that like Andrew apologizing would be bad in his bubble. But these guys, and I think Alex says it later, actually, Alex is going to say in their bubble, it makes more sense for them to apologize because of the type of audience they have. Right. And again, I, as a person who now doesn't watch any of these people, especially don't care either way. This isn't my business. Like, again, what men are doing is none of my business. My life moves on. Just remember to all the women in my audience doesn't matter what men are doing. Doesn't matter what women are doing. Doesn't matter what they are doing. The it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing, but what you're doing. So I don't give a fuck what any of these people are doing for the record. I'm just talking about it because y'all wanted me to talk about it. But like, this does not change my day. My day keeps going. My bank account keeps growing. And you know what I mean? Off and out. Me? And to give, there's, there's, first of all, before we get into like specifics or anything like that, obviously there's just literally no excuse. Pause. There is no excuse. Agreed. Pause. There's no excuse. There is no fucking excuse. <laughs> Ow. Um, and Can you pause? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> pause. No excuse yeah. right now. I just want to take in the beginning of it. There is no excuse for jokes. <laughs> there is never an excuse for making jokes. But can we try? I'm not going to ever make an excuse <laughs> for being a comedian. There is <laughs> never an excuse for making jokes, yeah. okay? Uh, that is a real statement mm. said by a man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want that to be clear. There is never an excuse for making jokes oh, with man. the boys. Go on, go on. Let's take it serious. Look at, but look at, look at how sad he is over on the left. Like, like it is, yeah. <laughs> fight, fight is a real thing. He is. So do you see how? Say, we should go back. Oh, oh, we should go back because he's going through it right now. Look, look how he practiced this. Let me, I'm gonna pick my skin off. I love off my you finger. guys. <laughs> go on, no, no, no. I need you to watch it. Look. He bite his bottom lip like oh fuck no man there is no excuse um, oh, and oof. fight or flight is a real thing like it is yeah fight or flight is a real thing and it's so not easy to say but it, when you're in those situations you you look at it through a lens of like bro if it was me i promise you i'll stand up i'll kick them cameras down yeah. i'll smack homeboy in the face yeah i'll say this i'll do that but when you're in there you're in shock you're in shock and all you want to do is move on yeah all you, bro, Pause. Move you, all on you is the wanna... i've i've been there i know i know what that's like when you're just having fun and laughing with the boys, and you're like, I just can't wait to move on from that. <laughs> uh, don't you know that feeling? So from Andrew's perspective, and I watched some men talk about it, from their perspective, they think the boys are lying. So they think the boys are lying, and they're trying to pander to their female audience, which they think is a bad idea. And from the female audience perspective, they f feel like the boys were making sort of like a faux apology in a way. And then that's also the question of like, look, as a consumer, you get to choose how to consume. I honestly don't think any of this is about morality. This is a, though it's about values. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't really matter because depending on which bubble you're in, they have their own value set. So it's not about objectivity. It's just about how do you feel as a consumer? And then you have to make that decision. 
feeling when you experience the fight or flight and then you just laugh? <laughs> Does that happen to you guys when your body is just... Now, I don't know. What is it? James and Fuhad? Is that their names? I don't know them, but I will say this, that they probably wanted their cake and to eat it too. They probably wanted to laugh with the boys and they probably wanted to appeal to their audience. I mean, that's kind of the ideal, right? So they can have two audiences. But as a content creator, you do kind of have to pander to a specific audience. Like Andrew's audience is never going to pander to me and I'm never going to pander my content to their audience. Like I don't want, you know, I have 60% women right now. Girls, uh, let's subscribe, please. Let's boost those numbers. Thank you. But like, you know what I mean? It's like, I know who my core audience is, but at the same time, I do try to make a space for everybody, all genders. And the, even the fact that I say all genders means I'm going to alienate most of Andrew Schultz's audience, right? Like I want all genders in my audience. So I believe in all genders, right? Which is the language I use to alienate people who are like, all oh, genders aren't real. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, I don't want you in my audience anyway. So with James and Fahad, the question is, who do you want in your audience? And it sounds like they want the women who are already there. Which in some ways, I think people should take that with a grain of salt. Maybe see how they grow. But also, man, if they had made like a full apology video, if they had really spoken to their audience, see how, see how like um, uh, Cody Ko ran away from the internet, which was better for his brand in the long run because his companies are still running. But you see how also from a business perspective, but you see how like James and Fahad, they're talking to their community. So if you're going to greet your community, do it with your fucking chest. Do it with your chest because now it looks like you did it with your. You're not chest, OK? It looks like you did it kind of pansy. You pussy it out, bro. You didn't make a full video titled Apology. I had to go like figure out where it was. Yes, it was the recent pod, but still it's like I the fact that I didn't know it was an apology. The fact that at the beginning of the apology, you said, if you know, you know, and if you don't, that's OK. And you're trying to keep you're trying to. Remove the possibility that everybody finds out. When you should just own it. Be like, yeah, what a fucked up piece of shit thing I did. And honestly, fuck Andrew and his audience. And then that would have been something. But see, you didn't do that. You just said, oh, Andrew made the racist joke and we laughed because we froze. They should have said, fuck, you know, I hate, like I made that decision. I don't want to go on Andrew's show anymore because honestly, we don't need people like that in our audience. You know, something like that. But see, I don't think they believe that. I think they're networking. And when you're networking, you don't burn bridges. You try not to. Because you want the opportunity to work together again. Because that's how you build. So, you know, you're always wrestling with your values and money. That's why money is so interesting. Do I protect my values or my bag? My values or my bag? Ah. Being torn with the primal urge to either <laughs> fight or flight. And instead you just go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Do you guys ever have that feeling? I feel like you're making an excuse for yeah. jokes. I'm not... Yeah. I would never. That sounds like what you're doing. Hey, I would never Disguise. excuse taking two things that have nothing to do with <laughs> one another and then bring them together to make your friends laugh. I would never excuse that, Mark. What if it has a good setup and a misdirection at the end? You're enticing me. <laughs> you're, you're doing that thing well, where no, you're, you're no. kind of tricking me with no, your no. brain. You're using no, your no, brain no, to no, trick me into I'm agreeing not. with something I do not want to agree with. I'm, I'm just asking. Please continue. Fucking work, bro. All you want to do is fucking move on. Just move on to the next thing. Just yes. move on to the next fucking thing. Move on. And like so we had times. to say a few times, bro, just move on. Just move on. Just move yeah. on. So many different times we were like, move on, move on, move, move on. on. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even like about pity laughs or anything, but we just wanted to get, get out of that situation. Out of the, get out of there. Get out of that situation. I know. Keep the ball rolling. And we thought it was going to be more of like a a bros chat. Yeah, but yeah, just it, so it ended in something like Oh. Wait, restless face says Andrew's giving I have black friends. I can say the N word. No, the fun thing about Andrew is he says it on stage. And I'm always like, how does he get away with that? Like, not that I'm saying, you know, what is a word really? But still, when I hear him, I'm like, how does he get away with that? Like, why does Andrew? That's what I'm saying. Black communities gave Andrew his platform. That was always my impression of Andrew is that black communities made him. Because every time I saw Andrew back in the day when I became a fan, I was like, oh, he's good with minorities. Black people like him. Okay. And he got on, so he would understand people. He would like research where he was going location to location. He would like learn about the communities and like learn their language. And like, he would be very like educated about his comedy. And that's why I swear to God, he was a better comedian back in the day. And then he would say like the N word. And I'd be like, whoa, how brave. You know, because like, aren't you going to get backlash from your community? But he got the pass. So then I think Andrew got big headed 
And I think Andrew got a little bit too much like I'm black. And he's not black. You know what I mean? I think he got a little bit Charlemagne the God is my co-host. Alex is on my show. Like black audiences like me. I think he got a little bit too... It got a little bit too uh, ego. I think his ego just got way big. I think he got way big. You know, that's that has been my impression of Andrew, which is why I've fallen off his pod because now it feels like his guys are just pick me guys who are like, yes. And by the way, I'm, I say this as somebody who used to watch Andrew and my brothers and I would bond. We'd send each other clips. We thought it was so fun. I'm not saying this as somebody who who didn't love him at some point. I'm just saying it as somebody who fell off. I fell off his content because I felt like his ego was just too high for me. And I feel like he was targeting the same communities that built him. And that feels so wrong, you know? I thought it was going to be that too. <laughs> I thought it was going to be one of those bros chats where you just Stupid. say everything that's polite and proper. I, I did think, <laughs> what do you guys do when you hang out with the boys? Uh, we play games. What kind yeah. of games do you play? What we're grateful for. Yo. That's, I, I will sometimes just say 10 things we're grateful for. I, I hate, <laughs> I hate that you guys have created a, an air. Okay, hold on. I think, is this it? Positively brilliant this week. Whoa, fucking loud, bro. Week DC Young Fly. Oh, you're knocking a guy on stage. I mean, positively brilliant this week, DC Young Fly. Oh, you're knocking a guy on It's not the fact that he knocked the guy out on stage, but listen, you got to protect your peace. What? That wasn't it. Listen to Andrew say the N-word. What? Did Positively you hear it? Positively brilliant this week, DC Young Fly. Oh, you're knocking a guy on stage. I mean, Positively brilliant this week, DC Young Fly. Oh, you're knocking a guy out. I didn't hear it. Okay, hold on. Everybody makes it. Are you albino? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I had no clue until this moment. <laughs> Whoa, man. But you're like, I feel like it was in one of them. Now I want to find it. He says it. He says it very like casually. Like, I mean, obviously soft A, bro. He's not like out here saying ER. Who says ER? You know what I mean? It just feels like it doesn't make no sense. I'll find it and we'll, we'll, we'll find it. But let's get back to this. Energy on this podcast where instead of just saying what we're grateful for <laughs> and appreciating the community that we build, we try to make each other laugh with inappropriate jokes. I hate that kind of boys hang. Yeah, we should change it. I want to change that. Can we start right now? Let's make it a Shabbat dinner. Yeah, <laughs> let's make it a Shabbat dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what is that? <laughs> it's the vibes we need. Just the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about our weeks. Be grateful. Yes. Turn down everything else in the world. You see why we'll everyone hates them? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see why? Because that's their idea of fun. Yeah, their yeah. idea of fun is sitting around, eating food that didn't taste good, and then yeah. telling everybody what they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's that. what we should do. There we go. Can we make an agreement right now? Turn it. No more inappropriate jokes. I, I like Especially that. Especially from you and even you. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You never say anything I don't. I don't. I'm the most appropriate. You are. I'm Thank God. One of us. Yeah, I have to be. Please continue. Keep you guys in line. Ugh, I hate the way Andrew picks his teeth, like picks his... Why do men pick their teeth or their noses on podcasts? Like, gross. In something that's like really, really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected. And protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that <laughs> it is our duty to protect you guys. Pause. Um, they don't understand their audience differences. So like Andrew Schultz would never think about protecting his audience. Because that's not how, that's not how his bubble works, right? Like men don't want to be protected. Like he's not their dad. He's not like, you know, what Andrew Tate pretends to be. Like we're going to protect these men. Bit, 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 bit. We're taking advantage. You know, it's not like that. But it is something else where like he can't understand it. I think Alex is going to explain it to him though. Let's see. Yo. <laughs> I feel like we failed. Yo. I feel like we failed, Akash. Yo. The past... How many years have we been doing this? Six, seven. The past seven years where I've been saying that your people fuck mud. <laughs> yeah. And you have been saying that my people fuck sheep. Yeah. I don't feel like we've protected either of our people. You know what? You're right. You're right. And it's, it's our duty. To and by the way, edgy jokes are only funny kind of because they're uncomfortable, never because they're clever. Right? Because like edgy jokes aren't really clever because they're obvious. 
they're usually rooted in racism or misogyny or sexism or something. So the reason that edgy jokes work is because they knee jerk make us go, oh my God, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm going to laugh. But also it's kind of funny because you said the thing out loud that's kind of funny, but also kind of not funny. And so sometimes I think comedians forget like edgy jokes only work for so long to an extent. You know what I mean? Like if you're making an edgy joke with your sibling, it's kind of funny. But if you're having a serious conversation and they keep making jokes, at some point you're like, hey, be serious now. Okay, like be serious. And again, I'm going to go back to it. I think comedians in general, like telling a joke is, it's only as funny as the audience finds it. I don't know if comedians are ever actually funny. And as somebody who like, I like Bill Burr, but do I like really think he's funny? I don't know. It depends on my mood. I think everyone's funny based off my mood. And that is kind of interesting. Dave Chappelle, I don't know. Sometimes he's funny. Sometimes he's an idiot. Sometimes Joe Rogan's never funny, even though I loved his podcast back in the day. It's like, I've never seen Joe Rogan make a stand-up comic joke that was good. So it's like, okay, what does it mean to even be funny? So obviously, when I think about humor and what's funny, I do think of a little bit older comedians. I think Lucille Ball was funny. I think Richard Pryor was funny. But I also think they're funny because I'm in the mood to be funny or to laugh. Does that kind of make sense? I think like Dave Chappelle was only ever funny because I watched him with my brothers or even Andrew and these guys were funny because I could laugh with somebody about it. So, you know, I don't know. This idea that comedians are funny, comedians are funny if you're in the mood to laugh, I think. To protect people. Scottish people, I just want to say that I apologize to all of you (laughs) for letting this motherfucker say we fucked you. (laughs) (laughs) Scottish people, I apologize that you're all so ugly that you have to fuck sheep. (laughs) I apologize for that. It's our duty to protect people. (laughs) Wait, so whenever we see a video of an Indian guy fucking mud, what is that? We haven't seen one. Oh, Oh, really? We've seen a girl, a guy fucking a girl in mud. They fuck mud. Oh, no. I don't know what any of this is referencing, by the way. Videos, they were going down on the mud. <laughs> okay, Bernie Mac was funny, Chad. Chad says Bernie Mac was so funny to me. R.I.P. Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac was so hilarious, but he was also so lovable. Right? I think like, well, at least from everything that I know, but then see what if there's like, I don't know. Maybe there's something I don't know about Bernie. You know? Or like, I used to love George Carlin. Chad says I really like George Carlin. I really liked George Car- Carlin, but he's like boring and stale to me now. Like, he has some brain, like, brain dead takes. But the thing is, like, when you're an edgy atheist coming out of religion, George Carlin feels like a genius. And then you kind of, like, are like, oh, I don't know. So, I don't know. For me, it feels like I grew out of these people. It felt like, again, because George Carlin relied on edginess. He just did. Or even Robin Williams. Like, he was lovable, but I hated his stand-up. So, again, I think it's the stand-up format I hate. I like comedians in movies. And I think that that's where I prefer them. Like Adam Sandler, I prefer his movies. I don't want to see you do stand up, you know? So it's kind of one of those things. Do a foreplay. That's <laughs> <laughs> warming up the mud. <laughs> it's wet already. <laughs> Stop making jokes. Oh, hey, Stop trying sorry, to have fun sorry, with sorry, the sorry, boys. Sorry, 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 Al, you're trying to have fun with Yo, the boys. I'm yeah. thankful for you guys, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thankful. Can you just say <laughs> n- say two things you're grateful for? Because what you black you women? To- better, one better be black women. <laughs> better be black women. Say <laughs> don't be. say black. Hey, if you don't say black women, it's a problem, Al. I'm thankful that you guys don't say I'm thankful that I'm not married to a black woman don't you dare Come say on. that God damn. Dare say I'm saying what not to say she's from Spain yeah. I gotta protect my woman now yeah. <laughs> okay keep going sure. keep going keep going keep going keep going sorry Indians by the way yeah so I apologize we, 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 can we, no I apologize I should have protected you I apologize. Because you're not capable of protecting yourself. That's the thing. I don't think that you're capable of protecting yourself, so it's my job to protect you. I got to infantilize you, and I apologize. Yeah, and say Indians don't... Yeah, this is so unfunny. I want to die. It's just so boring. And that's why I stopped watching, because I'm like, this is just so brain dead. And they're too old. They're like... Andrew's like 40 years old. So it's like, okay, we get it. Can we please... Okay. Fuck mud, so. I don't think that we have it in us <sighs> to overcome jokes, so I apologize. I should pretend. You guys have never fucked mud, and you're, you've never smelled. Whoa. Well, I feel like you added that. That's true. And I'm going to protect us. That is true. How we are you going to protect them? When we come here. <laughs> I think they don't smell. Yeah, true. They think loud is funny. I think that's what it is. 
and then their forced laughter or something. That's what it feels like. It feels like that's why I've, I say like it feels like a bunch of pick me, not pick me, sorry, um, uh, like cheerleaders. Like they're just like, yes, Andrew, you're so funny. <laughs> it's like the louder they are, the more they yell. It just, it's that kind of stuff, which again, balls and dick jokes. So, okay, fine. Like I can deal with it. It's like, okay, but that's why I fell off a lot of these boy bubbles. Cause I'm just like, okay, I'm over it. Can you guys fucking read a book, please? Jesus. Smell ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they've ever smelled. I wouldn't even make a caveat. And your food is sanitary. I also, that's the thing I believe. And You're I'm not ah, sanitary. What are you talking about? I'm saying great. piss in the sink. I'm grateful that their food is sanitary. I'm just saying This guy bites back. his feet? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are I you do, disagreeing with me? I do bite my feet. I just want to say I, that is not a Scottish thing, and I don't want you to put that on my community. That is a just me thing. Okay. Now, as far as the... <laughs> Sanitary. You're eating your own body. That's kind of a Haitian thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can we take I'm this seriously? This right. is an apology. They're fighting for their careers. Desolé. They're fighting for their lives Lo here. Siento, Haitians. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. And it is definitely not cool to be in that situation. And again, not be the ones to stand up and keep the cameras down. And we fucked it on that occasion. We did. It's not going to happen again. And it's about being human. It's about realizing that you don't know what you're prepared for. You don't know how to prepare for something. something you don't know that You don't know about. what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's happened one time, you're like, Pause, fuck. pause. Right. You know what's mad funny about this? Is that they had shit that they asked to take out the episode. You know what they didn't ask to take out? That part is crazy. Andrew's right. That part is crazy. Interesting. Interesting that they... They asked anything you want me to take out. They took some shit out. Now the question is, what did they take out? What did they take out? And that's why Andrew is feeling a little self-righteous in his bubble. Because he's like, um, you had the chance. So you thought it was okay too. So now you're apologizing feels fake. This was the bombshell that Andrew had waiting. That I was like, mm. explain yourself. Your racist slander. You, <laughs> why, why is your nose twitching? <laughs> <laughs> they had shit. Their 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 producer, whatever, was like, "Hey, we really think that." Why is Andrew looking more and more like Wario, bro? That's inappropriate. We like to take that out. That's very uncomfortable. Their fight and flight instinct really kicked in after the power down. But with that joke about the black women, nothing, nothing really seemed. The fight or flight wasn't really there. I'm not going to play if you were a fan of James and Fuad at this point. That feels like the moment you're like, I'm out. Like, you could have taken this joke out, but you didn't choose to. Interesting. Afterwards, your delivery was too good. I think maybe it was. they were seduced by a delivery. Yeah. I like them. them. I don't. I feel badly going through this, but you don't got to protect anybody. That's what I would say I like to y'all personally, to y'all publicly. You don't got to protect. Your people are equal. What are you talking about? Okay, let's listen to the end of the apology. You learn from your mistakes. Uh, I, Andrew's pissing me off with him picking his teeth. He's gross. The whole time he's been picking his teeth and eating it, and I'm gonna gag. Boys are gross. Um, and that's true. That's, that's literally that's, that's literally, literally learn from your mistakes. Yeah, we man. fucked it, and it, we're like, we're sorry. We and we definitely, you definitely do apologize. It's for me, like, it's one of them ones where you you don't realize that, like, for one. When you're part of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm, especially when, so when, when you're not, yeah, when, yeah. when unintentionally. Unintentionally, for real. And yeah. also on, on top of that, true. it was so crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community, mm. Ooh. the irony of the fact that whilst the whole reason we're in that country was to just show how much we love our community yeah. and show how much we love us. You guys are right. He looks like Waluigi. He does. I said, we're, I said, I said more, no, now I'm mixing up names. Who did I say? Yeah, he does look like, but yeah, you're right, the skinny one. He looks like the skinny one, not the fat one who farts. I got you. Our supporters and how much time we spent at the shows. Yeah, Wario. He doesn't look like Wario. He looks like Waluigi. You guys are right. You guys are right. Just like getting to know people mm -hmm. and just like understanding our community better and just like making friends and making <sighs> bonds and showing love and they're showing love. And this whole six week trip was just about showing how much we love our community yeah, and how much our community show up, yeah. show up for us. And then <sighs> to have that exact same trip be the reason that we're having to, to have this conversation now. Um, but at the end of the day, um, 
Mistakes, mistakes make you a better person. Mistakes do make you're you a better person. You're not born a per you're not born yeah. a perfect person. Um and See, yeah. what is this? You're not born a perfect person. Like what is this apology? It sucks. It just sucks. Did any women review it? It just sucks. We don't condone. We don't Look, appease that behavior. We don't All right, all right, all right. We get it. So, so here's the thing. Listen. I do have empathy for what they're going through. They're young into this content yeah, game. Exactly what and I was and this say. is what happens with a lot of people who are like funny on the internet but they're not comedians. Yeah. So they are still concerned about cancellation. I think comedians, we understand that being funny is saying inappropriate things. Yeah. Ooh, did you hear that? Being funny is saying inappropriate things. That is a specific bubble. That's what they think it is. I disagree. I think inappropriate things can be funny. But I don't think being funny means saying inappropriate things. I will make, I make edgy jokes on my stream, right? I do make edgy jokes, right? Absolutely. Do I think the edginess is what makes it funny? No, it's like the way I move my, my hands or my voice or the way my face moves or my, I think my physical comedy is much more what makes it funny than what I'm saying, if I'm going to be honest, but that's the thing is like Andrew believes this. So think about how his brain is working in this bubble. And then remember that somebody, a, a woman married this man. And just a reminder that these men were the ones who stood up to fresh and fit. Women were like, yes. And now here we are. Sometimes that thing that's inappropriate is something about you. Mm. Sometimes it's about other people. Mm. But the nature of being funny is something inappropriate happening. Yeah. Right. And... Interesting. Chess says, Brittany, could it be a way that they purposely left it out so they could create a fiction and make this apology for views? I see, I seriously hate thinking this, but I feel like this could make a sense in a way. It could make sense in a way. It could be possible. I think if they did it, then they're stupider than I thought they were because it's not good for views. Like you really don't want to have negative press if you're going for a wholesome brand. And as far as I know, I think they are going for alleged, allegedly like a more wholesome brand. Which is why it's also interesting that they went on flagrant, You're right? So it could be something that a content creator might do. I just never thought it would be them on purpose. I think they saw this as an opportunity. I think Andrew Schultz has a Netflix special. He knows Joe Rogan. This was one, now they're one degree removed from Joe Rogan. I think this was purely a business move in hopes that they would eventually be on Joe Rogan. That's my theory. Because look, everyone hopes they're on Joe Rogan. Because it's Joe Rogan, right? So it's this idea of like, oh, maybe they'll get me on. Maybe I'll be interesting. Maybe Joe will be fascinated by my story. And that's all they were thinking in my mind. I think what they what they're doing, what they don't realize is because they're young in the game. And we've all went through this. It's like scary in the beginning. You really think you're going to be canceled. You're worried. I'm sure that they have, you know, people that they have to take yeah. care of. And they're like, uh oh, what if I have to go back and I have to get a regular job? Is it all over? I, I completely have. Sure. That's a fear people have. But they have eight million followers on TikTok. They have a good following on YouTube, over a million subscribers. They've got a good thing going. This isn't going to be the end of their career. It's going to make a dent and it's going to impact them. It always does. But they're not going to actually fall off because of this unless they completely are bad at their job. Because a job as a content creator, much like any celebrity or entertainer, is to maintain a relevant space, uh, in the like a, a, a relevant spot in the space, regardless of the ups and downs of cancellations or people making videos about you. Again, cancellation is one of those things where what a cancellation is, is a group of people, often your base, deciding they don't like you or maybe the base that's opposite of you. But ultimately, you just have to ride that wave. If you chose entertainment as a job, then you need to ride the wave of when your audience doesn't think you're funny. Dodge the tomatoes or use them to make, you know, sauce for your pizza. But they're going to come your way no matter what. I have empathy for that. I get that. What yeah. they don't realize is by apologizing, you're just amplifying it. Yeah. The people that are upset at this, the majority of them don't even listen to the podcast. A lot of them are probably resentful of your success. And maybe there might be somebody who's actually not a part of the audience who's making it louder than it is, because that also happens where somebody actually hates these people and they're trying to make it more relevant. But to be honest with you, many women were hurt. I watched a lot of their videos. They were they were bothered by the joke. But at the same time, they, I think what they were really bothered by, and hear me when I say this, another man being one of those men. How fucking exhausting. When you think you found a content creator who's a man who finally isn't one of those men, and then you find out, fuck, well, there's another one. 
Same way we all felt when we found out David Grohl cheated. It's like, fuck. Okay, who's next? When the Me Too movement was happening, I remember Stephen Colbert said, oh my God, everyone's gone except Tom Hanks. Oh my God, what if Tom Hanks is next? Yeah. Now, have you guys heard, you know who just popped my bubble about controversy with him and I never knew was, um, God, um, Shawshank Redemption, Morgan Freeman. I never knew the shit with his granddaughter. And now my brain is like, what the fuck? Oh my God. Like, I'm just... I'm going to live on an island away from all of you bitches. You know what I mean? I'm so over it. I'm so over it. So I think that's really what was painful. And ironically, it's us. It's it's me. It's not Morgan Freeman. I'm exhausted by. It's me for having faith in these men. <laughs> they're like, why the fuck uh, should these guys make all this money? And they're just like reacting to stupid videos on the internet and like telling stories. They're just friends. From I'm just friends. Uh, yeah, I'm just friends. Why can't I yeah. have millions yeah. of dollars like they have? So there's, but they don't realize that. They really think it's their community. Your community still loves you. Your community still knows you. And if you actually have a community, like you say, which I do believe you do, they're not going to immediately throw you away because of one clip where you're laughing at a clear fucking joke. Yeah. I was at the live show. They're not going anywhere. Your fans yeah, you said fucking the, love you. You said it was the amazing. live show was amazing. It was amazing. And your right? fans exactly. fucking love you. They're not going anywhere. But what you have done, and this is hopefully the learning moment, is that you have empowered those people that are trying to cancel you. Remember, the people trying to cancel you get off on you being canceled. You having to come out and apologize and bend to their whim and change the disposition of who you are. And it is a change, right? Because you had the ability to edit it out. You chose not to edit it out. Didn't mean anything to you to that. You only want to edit it or you only want to talk about it now because of the negative reaction. If nobody reacted to it, you wouldn't go back and be like, we feel horrible and we have to protect our community and all this other bull. I mean, it's true. They didn't really meditate on it. They didn't have a statement ready. It's as if they weren't even prepared for the backlash, which means they didn't really think about it, which is interesting because it's 13 minutes into the pod. So they didn't even like go back, rewatch the pod and think, oh, shit, like we're going to have to answer for that. Maybe, you know. Bullshit yourself. And of course, now old clips are resurfacing of them being also shady with other comments they've made about black women. So again, I always thought they seemed misogynistic, but I think all men have to deconstruct misogyny in the same way that all older sisters have to. As an older sister myself, trust me, internalized misogyny, it's a thing. You just grow up thinking I'm better than all these other women, all these other bitches who can't keep up with the boys like I can. And then you realize, fuck, that's so toxic. You're one of the problems. And that's why I love Drew's book. Again, shout out to Drew. I just finished it loud. She had the same experience growing up where she was like, fuck, I'm one of those girls who thinks I'm better than other women because I can, quote, hang with the boys. Jesus, what a loser I am. And that is what it is. You're being a loser. But it's okay because this is an opportunity for you to be a winner. So let's deconstruct it, girl. And I think that that's what's exhausting about being a person is even when you feel like you're winning, you could be losing. So make sure you're winning for real. The learning lesson here is you do not apologize. because you're Sorry, older sister in a person of color household. My bad. I think older sisters in white households might be different. I don't know. But older sister, if you're in like an Assyrian, Arab, black, whatever, like group, you're often given the burden of the family's responsibility. Everyone's mental health comes to you. Anytime there's a problem, people call you. You're considered the second mom. Like there's a lot of like parentification that can occur. And so we're always the people who everyone goes to to like fix my problem, fix it. And then you're also the one who takes all the responsibility. Like you're the reason the kids are rebellious. You're the reason that it me, 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 And then you get a job and you, you know, you figure out how to be like a breadwinner and then you're burdened with the idea of being like, I've done it. I've done the thing. I became a man. But am I one? Of course I am. You're just going to empower these people who aren't even part of your community in the first place. <laughs> you guys have built something with people who actually know you and care about you. And one thing that happens could never sway them, especially on a podcast where you're joking around. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. That's a learning lesson. And I think also mm -hmm. when you're first going through that, you think about, oh, we have black female fans. I appreciate them so much. I th they're, they're, they must be so hurt by this. They're not hurt by this. You don't realize that. You start feeling empathy for people that don't feel bad that weren't hurt, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. oh, if you're thinking about all the, the black girls you see at the live shows, blah, blah, oh, those girls are probably so heartbroken, they think we're, the no, they don't. Mm -hmm. They know who you are. Those girls know you're who good. you are. They you're know good. you're joking, go out. They love you, bro, they love you. Look, if people make a joke about me, I love it. I, my Discord makes some of the greatest jokes and memes about me, I appreciate it. 
If you make a joke about me at the expense of my mental health, me getting medically triggered, my assault, anything that's like, hey, are you making it a joke at, a, at my expense? Then I'm not about it. But if you're making a funny joke and it's like funny, I don't care if you go after my nose. I don't care if you go after my body. I don't care if you go after my voice. I don't care if you go after my positions. Like I am good with a joke. But that's the thing about being an adult and even being a child is you have to discern, is that person making a joke that's just kind of like good hearted? Or is that person making a joke on my expense, at my expense? Is this person making a joke to bully me? Is this is this person making a joke that that encourages a group of people to attack me because I'm less than. And I think that's what's so scary is like you have to learn how to do that and you have to learn to discern and it's difficult to know what, like, which one is happening. And so again, like even um, even like different kinds of, like I remember I have a I have a very specific relationship with my brothers, okay? It's very specific, especially with my little brothers. Okay, it's very, very specific and I remember like a friend of mine was trying to like mimic the way that I joke around with my brothers and they were trying to joke with me in the same way. And I was like, oh, no, mm -mm. because like I don't have that kind of relationship with you. So when they make the same jokes my brother was making, it felt like at my expense because like you don't know me like that. Like you don't know me like my little brother knows me. You don't have our rapport. Like I saw this boy being born. I saw my little brother come into the planet, like come into existence OK, I've been like with this little boy since he was in the womb and out the you know what I'm saying. So when he comes at me and he like comes at me and he's like fake punching me or being like, you're a bitch, you're a bitch. And I'm like, you're a bitch, bitch. And like we're sitting there like bitch, 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 bitch. It's like funny. And there's a rapport there. But if another one of my male friends is like, yeah, you're a cunt. I'm like, whoa, we don't know. I don't have that relationship with you. Like my sister can call me a cunt, but like you don't know me like that. You know, like there's certain things that like even with your besties, like mm, there's a line with all my besties, with all my friends, with all my like we all have like my cousins, my we all have all our own personal boundaries. And sometimes I think people like Andrew or people online think they get to act that way with everybody. But sometimes acting that way with everybody is the reason it's bad. This idea like, oh, I make fun of everybody. So it's OK. Maybe sometimes that's not the right way to see it. It sounds good, right? Like, hey, I'm an equal opportunist. I make fun of everybody. It almost sounds good. Almost sounds good. But it doesn't quite work when you put it into action. You have to be considerate of people. So a joke at someone's expense, not a joke. You're just bullying somebody. A joke that makes somebody feel loved and seen, that's why Andrew's original work felt so good because I think the communities he was joking with felt seen by him, especially by an outsider. They were like, oh, this outsider kind of makes us feel seen. That's a nice feeling. But now this outsider has overstayed his welcome and he, need get, he needs to get the fuck out. And that's where Andrew is in his career, in my opinion, with minority communities especially. He overstayed his welcome, which is almost too hard to do with a minority community. So then you fucked up. Get out. So yeah. I agree with everything you said, but I think in their situation, I don't necessarily feel like they shouldn't apologize because their fan base is different. You guys are comedians. You cultivated a fan base that are used to edgy jokes. Mm -hmm. So their fans tuned into mm -hmm. the show. And I like how Alex, Alex is explaining the bubble difference here. He's saying like you misread, you don't understand, you can't treat their audience like we treat our audience. Heard them talk or laugh about jokes in a way that they've never done before. And so you, their fans can be disappointed. So this it's is, like, I don't yeah. think it's wrong to necessarily apologize in that uh, aspect. I, I would agree with you if the reaction to that episode happened immediately after it came out. There was no- See, I disagree with this because again, sometimes you don't even see anything for years. I didn't know about Nikocado Avocado and Stephanie So for four years. You guys were like, you need to watch this. And I'm so glad I did. You know, YouTube members, you can watch me watch those videos. They're very long. But I'm so glad I watched those videos because now I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I didn't realize it was as bad. And everybody had been telling me, but you know how the internet is. So I was like, no way. And it was bad. It was horrible what Nick did to her. So Andrew's not understanding sort of like, Two months to dig up some stuff isn't that long in the internet world, in my opinion. You know? Oh. Oh, yeah. Negative reaction after it came out. This is like a month, two months 
after the episode came out. And what, to me, that's indicative of somebody who just likes canceling or causing nonsense on the internet. They're trying to like bait people with, you know, the, the, this is also on the back end of another thing about them. This supports the thing. Oh. People are already not liking them for whatever reason. And it's oh. not because of them, they're, because they're resentful, hateful, angry, bitter, jealous people. Now, listen to me when I say this, you guys know how I take down my haters. Okay. We laugh, we have a fun time. But you also know I am open to constructive criticism. I'm open to, you know, discussion with really good faith people. The cope here is insane to me. I feel like they're coping so hard where they're like everyone who disagrees with us is is just jealous of us. And I get accused of this too. Like Brittany's just afraid. Listen, and I think like Drew said it best in a recent TikTok. I am so happy to talk to good faith people, but I'm not here to debate bro my way through a panel that's obviously misogynistic. I'm not going to talk to misogynists in order to validate my humanity. And that's the dilemma is like, I don't think anyone's ready to realize like misogyny is a spectrum. Racism is a spectrum. Homophobia and transphobia, it's a spectrum. You can be transphobic and still believe in trans rights. And that's the problem. You can be racist and still think black people get to sit at our lunch tables. And that's why the dilemma is like people are understanding. You can say you love women and you want to protect them and still be a misogynist. And the fact that people don't understand that is what is so... Well, it just shows that we're very unread and uncultured, which is fine. I mean, aren't we all? The moon's a planet, you know? So, like, I'm here to poke fun at everybody, myself, you, everybody. We're all dumb in some aspect of our life. But the reality is is that when somebody comes to you and says, like, hey, check yourself, check yourself, and then you can disagree. Because there's not, like, maybe they're wrong because of their bubble perspective. Like, if a vegan comes to you and says, you're unethical for eating meat, you can still choose to eat meat and be right. But check yourself first. Ask yourself, should I be eating meat? That's a great question. And then make a decision. The problem is when people come to you, a vegan comes to you and says, don't eat meat. And you're like, fuck you, bitch. I'll eat your mom. Okay. Well, you're not like really thinking about it. Like think about it for like a second. Okay. And I do. I really, I know you guys don't see me because I do it off stream. Every time I get a comment that's mad at me, I sit and think about it. I really do. I ask my partner. I call my sister. I'm like, what do you think about this? Did I do something wrong? Should I think about this? Like I, I check in with people because I really want to make sure that I'm checking myself within my values. And I know maybe I should do it more on stream, but it's one of those things where I think Andrew and Akash are missing the point that the people that are showing criticism, they're hurt. Maybe some of them are being dramatic. Maybe some of them are being very like rude and reason. And ultimately you're an entertainer. And if your audience isn't entertained, boo, boo, that's it. Okay. That's you. You have to decide as a content creator, are you here for your audience or are you going to risk having your audience get mad at you by standing up for your values, whatever that means? Or are you going to be Matt Rife? Like, you know, Matt Rife needed that validation from men. Can you imagine being Matt Rife, having 20 million followers or whatever it was and giving it up for the validation of Jordan Peterson? Oh, Matt. I love the way you called everybody retarded. Matt, that was so brave, Matt. Wow, if only Ethan would do that. Ethan needs to call his his audience retarded. So wow, Matt, I just love that. Thank you for sucking on my cock. Tammy barely does it anymore. <laughs> See, was that an edgy joke? I don't know what just happened. See, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's, you know, is that? <laughs> I just feel like, you know, you make your decisions who see these guys fucking killing it, being happy, having fun <laughs> all over. They're going for across doing, continents. For doing nothing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Podcasting, like, it, it looks like it's the easiest thing in the world. And honestly, it's really not that hard. Like, yeah. I understand why people are resentful of the success of podcasts. Yeah, okay? of course. They don't have another thing that they could do to justify where they are. Like, we, we do stand-up. And everybody, you can say whatever you want about stand-up, but most people are scared to do it. Yeah. It is most people are pussies to be a comedian, bro. Chat says, I have a question. What if somebody is telling you you hurt them, but whatever you said or did was still within your values? I would still feel bad if I hurt them, even if it was out, even if it was out of honesty, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I've had that happen so many times, right? Like, I'm very offensive to my conservative family, right? My conservative friends find me very offensive because they're just like, you hurt me when you talk about men, it hurts my feelings. When you talk about religion, it hurts my feelings. Hey, when you talk about Trump voters, it hurts my feelings. You're so valid in that. Go talk to your therapist about it. Thank you. I love you. Go talk to your therapist about it. I am. I am absolutely aware that it hurts their feelings. I just think given the context of the hurt, I can't do anything about that. 
And I'm certainly not going to put my opinion aside or my morals to make people feel better. Don't watch my content. Don't ask me questions you don't want answers to. Okay? Because that is the reality of life is that if I hurt somebody genuinely, like about something that wasn't related to also my personal value opinion, like if I said, um, if I said something, I'm trying to think of a good example that doesn't have to do with also not giving out my values, like like giving up on my own values. Like maybe if my friend was like, hey, I actually am pretty insecure when it comes to like people talking about my body. Do you mind not making jokes about my body? But like, oh my God, bro, thank you for being so open and vulnerable with me. Of course, I'll totally stop those jokes. If my friend was genuinely feeling like, oh my God, like it's it hurts my feelings when you talk about my body. Because I make a lot of jokes like, bro, I could take you in a fight. Look at these muscles, bro. Look at, look at these muscles, bro. I could take you all in a fight, bro. But if they were offended, if that really hurt their feelings and they came to me and said, hey, Brittany, I'm really fucked up over this. I'd be like, bro, my bad. Because for me, that's like, I'm not, I don't know what is sensitive for you. I would totally, I would totally do that for sure. Yeah. It is an art, a skill that you can refine. Like yeah. say whatever you want about like Draymond Green's podcast. You can't talk that much shit about him hooping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That shit is hard. You can't hoop like him. Yeah. You might be critical. You say, oh, I can't shoot whatever, but you can't hoop like him. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lock down seven footers yeah. at six, seven or whatever the fuck he is like he does. And they don't have that other thing to justify what they have. Stand up. Most of you don't even get on the stage. So exactly. Yeah. Mm. But, so yeah, yeah. So people are resentful. So they they do this thing, and then they find this podcast clip just justify whatever BS narrative they're spinning about these guys, mm -hmm. and then they throw that on the fire. And that's why I felt bad that like they're using us as a tool. And, this, and the joke, I didn't even know what the joke was. I watched the joke. It's so clearly a joke. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. so Bro, clearly it's, a joke, it's like, and it's funny. Yeah. yeah, okay. We said some crazy. We've said much crazier things and laughed at it. That was so. It makes sense for their bubble that they would be like, "We're not apologizing for this." Keep in mind, they are those lowbrow comedians. They shouldn't apologize in their bubble based off their values. But this is your opportunity to say, okay, if those are your values, I stop watching. Right? If these are your values, I stop watching. And that's it. Like, that's that's the power of humanity. And that's why cancel culture works to an extent, but also doesn't. Because your audience can be replaced with a different one quick and so funny and such a turnaround mm -hmm. that you just have to laugh at it. Mm -hmm. It's just taking what you said and then turning it around back yeah. on. I it's also, like verbal jujitsu and that's why you laugh. I get their position. Like it sucks. I do think they're nice guys, but I, yeah, they're awesome. Being in that spot, like I just don't need, ever need to apologize for laughing at a joke. Like if they came on and said the joke, then maybe they can be like, look, I did something wrong. I said a joke. I shouldn't have said my apologies, but like they just laughed at a joke. Like yeah. I laugh. At Interesting that they didn't work. They didn't learn anything from the Shane Gillis situation. It's funny how these boys did not introspect on the on the Shane Gillis situation because Shane even said, like, you're not being funny right now. Like, what's the joke? You're just being ableist. Like, you're just making fun of a guy with Down syndrome who's working out and he likes his like hobby. Like, what's the joke? The joke is what I look like. I have Down syndrome. Like, that's not funny because Shane has a brother who has Down syndrome and he's very like in, uh, active with communities who have disabilities. And the boys made fun of him by showing a man working out at the gym who happens to have Down syndrome. And they're like, look, we got a video of you working out. And Shane's like, what is the joke? And I'm like, yeah, what's the joke? Like, what is the joke, right? Like, if you think about it, what is the joke? The joke is I look like I have Down syndrome? Like, is that the fucking joke? Like, I don't even, you know what I'm saying? So did the, the boys were called out by a man in their field who's a comedian who does what they do and they didn't learn from it. So that's fine. That's their values. This is why I unsubscribed. I was like, I'm over it. And by the way, people are starting to look like look at Ethan Klein the same way. That's the irony, right? Because Ethan will go after this group and be like, I love Shane Gillis. I can't believe he went after Andrew. Andrew's such a misogynist. Trust me when I say this, Ethan's heading in that direction. He's next because he's not listening to his audience. He's not taking criticism well, and he's going to have to get a new audience because the one that's given him like time and time and time and time again a pass is officially going to get fed up. It is what it is. Shit is fucked up. All the you like, see a fat person fall off a building <laughs> and die <laughs> and crush a, a, a daycare. Yeah. That's funny. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> that is a funny thing. You never saw that? Like yeah. a fat person falls in the building and crush an entire day. It's care. extremely That's funny. Yeah. It is it a is. crazy thing that yeah. happens. It's so tragic. Yeah. Mm. The Israel does it all the time in Gaza. Actually, that's. <laughs> yeah. He goes after everybody. See how he tries to make the jokes and like he he will go after everybody. 
But maybe that's also the problem, right? More specific. It does get yeah. less funny, but it's still pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. Maybe we went too far. Maybe you guys went too. Anyway, yeah. we don't have to bring it back to the Jews, which is often what happens but in that's conversation. What, that's what Dub does, though. It he is. does always bring uh, it back to always the Jews. With this guy. But he had a great time in Vegas. Dude. Great time. So it he wasn't had that good. Amazing. It was not that good. Off your phone so much, bro. It was not. Every time the camera cuts, the Dub is on his phone. Chad says, I find Ethan extremely lowbrow and juvenile, but that's why I liked Ethan. Because it was like dick and fart and stupid jokes. That's why when Ethan tries to act like he has moral high ground, I'm like, shut up. You're my stupid people podcast. H3 used to be my stupid person podcast. Don't talk. Don't be serious. Don't talk about Palestine and Israel. Be quiet. Be quiet unless you know what you're, unless you're fundraising for Palestine. Shut up. Like, which obviously would be very awkward. But like, you know what I mean? Like, I used to watch... I watch all comedian podcasts. I used to. I'm done with all of them. But I used to watch them for stupid people. They were my stupid people listening. They were my trash TV. And then they all started to try to have opinions on politics and shit. And I was like, I love that. But have the funny opinions. Because it's. I'm not saying comedians shouldn't have opinions. They could. But like when you do the moral high ground thing and you try to cancel other people. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like when Joe Rogan tries to like stand up for like a position that isn't well educated it feels like stop talking just be funny but also i'm not saying comedians can't have thoughts plenty of comedians have very thoughtful positions as voters as consumers right like i'm not one of those you know how conservatives are like shut up and dribble right have you ever read that book was that laura ingram trash celebrities have opinions celebrities can have opinions entertainers can have opinions comedians can have opinions i want to hear your opinions but you can't do the half half Right. You can't like you got to You got to be serious sometimes and funny sometimes. And this was an opportunity for everybody to be serious. But it was like missed, I think. I think my opinion, you know, oh, you're like so watching cool. the yeah, fight. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> you see, the oh, who's videotaping? Who's videotaping? Yeah, you're right there in front. Use your eyes. Enjoy the moment. I, I, he, I have to defend him he here. Can't I can't see over his nose. Here. It is hard. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I can't. Uh, yeah. My bad. My bad. That was insensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that That's is insensitive. also racist. And I do apologize to all people. That is a people. fucked up joke. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry the Jewish that I people. Okay, hold on. Chad's saying some comedians are also like philosophers in a way, and comedians are modern day philosophers, and blah, 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 blah. Philosophers are losers in their bedrooms. Like, I don't know how to say this to you. Philosophers are not interesting. Like, they're interesting because they're people, but they're not special. This pedestal as a philosophy channel is people who love philosophy. I've read so many books on philosophy. All of them were angry, bitter. They were neurodivergent. They were incels. They were also struggling. They were ostracized. They were loved by other men who were losers. Like all of them murdered people or had slaves. Like just a reminder that philosophers are just people. And anyone can be a philosopher. A comedian can be a philosopher. A philosopher can be a comedian. It doesn't mean anything. We put we put an onus like, oh, you're a doctor. It doesn't mean anything. You could be a doctor that rapes your clients. What does it mean? Like to say like, oh, but that's a doctor. Uh, what do we, what, what does it mean? Oh, he's a priest. You can trust him. I don't think so, girl. You might want to, <laughs> this idea of like, oh, I know you're a good person because of your job title. I don't know that. I don't know that. So I think that's the issue we're running into in society. We keep looking at people like, are you the person I can trust? Are you the person I can trust? You can't trust none of these bitches. Are you a philosopher then? I don't identify as a philosopher. I identify as an entertainer and a YouTuber. But if you want to call me a philosopher, sure. But like, that's not how Britney thinks of herself. Like, I don't go home and think, I'm a philosopher. I think I go home and go, I love philosophy in the same way that like people love the news. Like people love crocheting. I like philosophy. That's my thing. That's like a thing that like my brain goes, I could listen to this all day. Right? It doesn't matter. It's like saying, like, I love, I don't know, sci-fi. Like, okay. I just like the thing I like. But I am a YouTuber at the end of the day. I am an entertainer. I'm here to have fun and talk to my audience and make content and do all that stuff. Okay? These men are here to entertain. Stop putting any of us on a pedestal. We're just people. Especially people in history who have been written as the victor. Stop putting anyone on a pedestal. People. At that uh, joke. Don't yeah. be sorry. You know what? Nah, we have to protect uh, you, though. 
Thanks, guys. We have. <laughs> anyway, hopefully this is a learning lesson for them. They are good guys. They're you know they're new to this game and they're going to figure it out. They're talking down to them, which is so interesting. Maybe they're right in their bubble. If these boys want to make it in their bubble, sure. The dilemma is Andrew's so fucking stupid. He doesn't know they're not playing the same game. That's what Andrew has to understand. Uh, they're not playing the same game you're playing, my bro. So your advice is useless. Your His advice is so useless in that bubble. Now, they can change gears and they can play this game and then they can take Andrew's advice. I recommend they don't. This is not a sustainable bubble. But I have noticed this kind of thing happen. And by the way, Andrew's Patreon is like one of the top Patreons. They get like $100,000 a month to do this podcast. Maybe it's less now, but it used to be a lot. So just remember, if you want to, join my Patreon, support the content. You know what I mean? The podcast is coming back every Monday starting in October. Get ready, girls. But do you hear me when I say this? These guys make six figures a month, last time I checked, running this podcast. Maybe it's a little less. I don't know. But it's a lot. You know what I'm saying, girl? Happen with like the funny people on YouTube that are podcasters that aren't stand-ups. It's not just them, it's other people as well. And I think it's just because they don't really understand like the essence of jokes. Yeah. Right? And I think that like if they did and jokes were important to them, they would defend the jokes. You will never have a comedian come in here and apologizing about it because then we'd have to Hold on. Sorry. Why are you so obsessed with me? Apologize for every single thing we yeah. do. We have to apologize for our existence. Yeah. For them, they're like, all right, we could just apologize and move on. It's going to come with you. You apologize now. The next time you guys laugh at a fucked up joke about something else, that community's coming for you. Because mm. everybody's sniffing. But everybody, everyone's community allows a certain level of fucked up jokes. As long as it's at the community that we're all agreeing is at our expense. That's the problem is like, uh, Fuhad and James, right? Fahad and James, they're allowed to make jokes at the expense of someone's community. It just has to be the community their audience agrees we're punching. T do you know what I mean? That's how it works. Every bubble has a community we're allowed to make fun of. Like, you know what's interesting is in Croatia and a lot of Europe, the Romani, like the, what you guys like would call the gypsies, which is like a slur now, they are the minority group that people racially discriminate against. And I just found a TikTok of a guy who's trying to deconstruct and dispel those racist connotations around those community, the Roma people, right? Roma? Roma. Romanian. No, not Romanian. Roma. Yeah. So, and that's interesting to me where I'm like, okay, so now there's a new bubble that's coming in. They have a pretty bad reputation because of racist, like, I, I don't know. Like, it's hard to say because I don't know anything about this bubble. But it's interesting to watch a TikToker, like, try to say, like, hey, my people aren't like this. My people actually have been here for 900 years. We have an interesting history. But here's the problem. Everyone's people has a fault. And that's the problem. No matter where you go on this planet, if there are people there, there's going to be problems. And that's the problem. So when you look at your life and you think about it, and this is what philosophy is, is the exploration into the self, into knowledge, into the universe. What are you doing on this planet? And your people that you're associating, that you're picking, the bubble you're associating with as a consciousness, the people you put on pedestals, the people you take off pedestals, that is all relating to how you see the world. Why did you come to these conclusions? Why did you even decide that these are the people I'm going to be friends with? These are the people I'm not going to be friends with. Why did you decide this person is a bad person? This person isn't. You have to make that decision. And for all those people that are trying to build a contract over what philosophy is, welcome to your bubble. You're doing it right now. You're proving the point that my philosophy is explaining why you're doing what you're doing. You need it in a box. So the box tells you what you're engaging with, right? But philosophers don't just make formal arguments, chat. Philosophers ponder about the existence of life. You should do some more of that. Because right now, modern day Western philosophers do far less of that sit on their fucking YouTube channels and preach to an audience that wants to suck their dick for saying the most basic fucking shit and often bullshit shit. You want to actually be a philosopher or think about philosophy? Ponder your own goddamn existence before you sit around and tell other people how to live their life. And that's the dilemma. All these men who tell you what to do with their life, you think that's philosophy. If you want to be told what to do, go talk to your mom. I saw her last night and she was telling me what to do in the bedroom and it was good. She is good with words, you know? 
It might be black women now. You might make an Asian joke. Now the Asians are coming. The, everybody out there has their antennas up and they're like, yo, we could cancel these motherfuckers because they're going to go bend over the second we start lighting up their Twitter. Mm-hmm. So so they're afraid. Like Matt Reif, I'm afraid to bend at these people. I'll have to do it every time. You don't have to do it every time. You have to do it when you fuck up for your audience, for your values. You should have an audience that reflects your values back to you. The dilemma with being a content creator who doesn't state their values is you've built an audience that allows themselves to project themselves onto you. And so if you're like a kind of a clean or wholesome YouTuber, people will assume you vote like them, think like them, act like them, believe like them. And they find out you don't. It's like, oh my God, who are you? You don't know who a lot of content creators are if they're amassing like a more general audience. Because usually once you share your values, you alienate a part of your your audience, right? Uh, it, hopefully this is a learning lesson for them. Um, but maybe they have different rules in England or something. I don't know. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, they're softer over there, too. Like, you case. can't say spaz or the N-word, even? Yo. Wait. What? <laughs> Wait, I mean, you can't. I'm saying you can't. Mark, are you going to get us canceled yeah, by the spaz it's, community? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the spaz community is going to come after us. <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do to you? Well, I'm not going to say because I feel like that would be inappropriate. <laughs> but they'd probably be really in control. And, uh, the most. Yeah, you know, and have a very measured approach towards whatever was going on. Yeah, exactly. What does spaz mean out there? I think it's Down syndrome. I think it's like oh. people have mental handy, mental disabilities. Oh, what is it here? It's uh, kind of like, like a kid that has sugar. I think. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Like you just <laughs> like a weird, a, like frost some mini wheats in yeah. the morning and then you just act like a child. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they think retards are in England? Yeah, I guess so. That's actually fucked up on y'all's part to call them that. That's derogatory. Oh, I thought that's where we got spaz from because you're acting like a retard. No, I thought you were just hyper. Oh. Hmm. I'm a spaz on the mic. Nobody says I'm a spaz on the mic when they have yeah, I'm go retarded. mentally retarded rhymes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm going to spit some crazy shit on the mic. Go stupid. Go, yeah, what we, is the next? Go yeah. dumb. Black Eyed Peas had Let's get retarded. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yo. I think- True that the first edit of that song, that was crazy. And then they changed it. Okay, it's done. Okay, so now it was like bubble versus bubble versus bubble crime. I think it was smart for the boys to apologize if they wanted to keep their audience, which it seems like they did. Uh, Too bad they didn't sort of apologize in a way that felt like they understood where their audience was coming from. But also, I'm not surprised it happens that way sometimes. So overall, I think what we can learn from this is as a consumer, you hold the power to unsubscribe. As a consumer, you hold the power to forget these people exist. Thank you.